I welcome to the session on CMA part one, financial planning, performance and analytics. We are discussing about uh, the cost accumulation systems in which we discussed about uh, job order costing, process costing, activity based costing and life cycle costing. In this unit, we discuss about absorption costing method and variable costing method what is absorption costing and what is variable costing method used by manufacturing industries in which we have some you know the product cost uh, you no know, and its treatment using absorption costing and variable costing so we are going to concentrate on two methods absorption costing method and variable costing method we also see the difference in profits when there is an inventory at the end of the financial year at the end of the financial year so with this you can say, make it simply uh, say that if there is no ending inventory on the closing date we do not have any inventory there is no question of absorption costing and variable costing you understand only when there is a closing stock at the end of the year we will check whether we should use absorption costing and variable costing if there is no ending inventory at the end of the financial year there is no question of using absorption costing and variable costing okay so say for example you produce 10000 units during the year you sold 9000 units and 1000 units are still there in the closing inventory and this will go to next year right so what is the dollar amount you are transferring to the next year for this 1000 units for this there is a question which method are you using absorption costing method or variable costing method clear but if all the 10000 units produced are sold okay you don't have any ending inventory there is no question of the inventory moving to the next year there is no question of using absorption costing and variable costing method so in simple when there is a closing inventory at the end of the year we need to see the difference in profits and the inventory value that is the difference between absorption costing and variable costing method absorption costing method is also known as full costing method and variable costing method is called marginal costing method or direct costing method i will discuss in detail about absorption costing and variable costing methods the treatments of uh, the costs considering the income statement absorption costing absorption costing is also known as what full costing method yeah full costing method and this is the only method allowed for external reporting in other words the variable costing method is not allowed for external reporting okay variable costing method is not allowed for external reporting could we understand here external reporting for external reporting we should use only absorption costing so you are presenting your financial statements giving your cost information you are allowed to use only absorption costing whereas variable costing method is not allowed okay now let us see the production cost or cost of production you remember cost of production is the total of direct material direct labor the total of direct material and direct labor is called what prime cost and when we add manufacturing over it we get what the cost of production or production cost now this production cost is consisting of what direct material 
direct label and just classify this manufacturing overhead into two categories fixed manufacturing overhead and variable manufacturing overhead fixed manufacturing overhead is like uh, factory rent depreciation uh, you know the license fee some uh, wages which are paid on you know monthly basis to the people who are working in uh, supporting departments variable like uh, you know hourly wages for overtime then uh, repairs utilities etc so in an absorption costing method we consider entire amount direct material direct labor fixed manufacturing over it and variable manufacturing over it to find the production cost to find the production cost let us take an example here say for example say for example we spent uh, $20,000 on direct material, $10,000 on uh, direct labor, fixed manufacturing over it is $8,000 and variable manufacturing over it is $4,000. Clear. The total amount comes to what? $42,000. Two thousand units during this year, out of which one thousand units are sold. One thousand units, the remaining in the stock. Stock. Closing inventory. So when you say forty-two thousand dollars is the amount you spent on cost of production. So the cost of goods sold is going to be $42,000 divided by 2,000 units times how many units are there in the closing inventory? 1,000. Yeah, how many units are sold? 1,000. So it is going to be 21,000 cost of goods sold. What is the ending inventory? 1,000 units, right? So divided by the total number of units produced, multiplied by 1,000 units in the stock. So you have 21,000 closing inventory, ending inventory. Okay, so this cost of goods sold is going to be reduced from your sales to get the gross profit and deduct your admin selling and distribution expenses to get what? The gross profit and net profit operating profit I mean now we understand that uh, uh, twenty one thousand dollars is a, a, a cost of production charge to the cost of goods sold and the remaining twenty one thousand is charged to the ending inventory which will be transferred to the next year and that will become the opening inventory value in the next year now say for example in this absorption costing we are considering the fixed manufacturing over it see uh, fixed manufacturing over it uh, include what the rent of the factory building even though you are transferring 1000 units to next year next year also there will be rent right insurance depreciation so the fixed overheads are there in the next year but you are Transferring the fixed overheads of current year to the next year just because you have some inventory left unsold, right? So this is the concept is identified with the variable costing system in which we do not consider the you know the fixed manufacturing overhead the production cost. Okay, let me give you in detail what happens to the fixed manufacturing overhead. Variable costing method. Variable costing method is used for what? The managerial accounting purpose. Yeah. There is a problem in absorption costing. There's a problem in absorption costing because absorption costing will you know give you more profits. I'll show you with a small example. Uh, as compared to the variable costing method, absorption costing method gives you higher profits. 
So when you are paying incentives to your managers based on the profit, absorption costing will uh, result in higher profits. Therefore, you end up with the paying heavy amount of incentives. Okay, and this is the reason why we use variable costing method to, to avoid this kind of problems. But you know, the variable costing method is not allowed for external reporting purpose. Okay, it is to be used only for internal purpose. That is the reason why we call it as managerial accounting cost method, managerial accounting cost concept. So we do not consider here. Yep. Yeah. Right, let's go back and check the production cost normally what we include here. Remember, direct material, direct labor, and in manufacturing over it, we have fixed manufacturing over it and variable manufacturing over it. In absorption costing, we consider all the four amounts, remember, but here the fixed manufacturing over it is not going to be considered because it is a variable costing method. We consider only the variable amounts, okay? Right, so now here, the direct material Yes, we are considering. Direct labor, yes, we are considering. Variable manufacturing over it, yes, we are considering. What happens to the fixed manufacturing over it? Fixed manufacturing over it will be expensed 100% and that is charged to the income statement in the current year itself. You got my point? Even though you have some stock left with you, still, entire amount of fixed manufacturing overheads are charged to the current year p and account income statement. Okay, so the fixed manufacturing overhead is treated like a period cost. Period cost means that has to be expensed in the period in which it is incurred. A period cost has to be expensed in the period it is incurred. It is treated like a period cost like admin selling and distribution over it's clear. Now let me give you the same, same example here. Direct material, we have uh, 20,000. Direct labor, 10,000. Fixed manufacturing over it of 8,000. And variable manufacturing over it of 4,000. We are using variable costing method. So while calculating the production cost, remember, we take full amount of direct material, full amount of direct labor, but no fixed manufacturing over it, variable manufacturing over it, yes. Now let us take only these three amounts except the fixed manufacturing over it. So you have 34,000. We are, we are not considering this $8,000 for your information. Yep. Yeah. Now, this $34,000 is the amount spent on producing how many units? Yes, 2,000 units. Clear? Right. Now, let us see the cost of goods sold and the ending inventory value. If we sold, you know, 1,000 units and 1,000 units are still there in the stock. Okay, so cost of goods sold equals entire amount of this 8,000 fixed manufacturing over it plus 34,000. Okay, multiplied by what? 1,000 units divided by 2,000 units. This is the cost of goods sold. Please remember, entire amount of fixed over it are charged in the current period itself, okay? Now, what is the ending inventory value? Ending inventory value equals, we should take only the variable costs, okay? So 34,000 divided by 2,000 units produced times 1,000 units. So this is the ending inventory value, clear? Right, so what is the amount here? 17 plus eight, 25,000. And what is the amount here? The closing inventory value, 17,000. See, here cost of goods sold is 25,000. 
whereas in the previous you know absorption costing it was only 21000 because there we consider fixed manufacturing over it as a product cost you know uh, uh, and we bifurcated it to the cost of goods sold as well as the ending inventory okay now let us understand practically what is absorption costing method and variable costing method and uh, which method you should use if you are a tax representative okay tax officer and which method you should use if you are the owner of the company assume that uh, we have a sale of two million dollars two million dollars okay and uh, um, we have direct material of say eight hundred thousand direct labor of say four hundred thousand or two hundred thousand two hundred thousand then we have a uh, fixed manufacturing over it please remember this is where you need to concentrate fixed manufacturing overhead of 120,000 then we have variable manufacturing over it of 80,000 we have non manufacturing over it not to have any confusion I'm giving you some you know fixed admin over it okay fixed admin overhead uh, of say 20,000 not to take into consideration at all just take only the total non manufacturing over it but just for you know your attention I am giving you the amounts with the classification okay and we have 12,000 here then fixed selling and distribution over it SND SND over it's of say 15,000 then variable selling and distribution over it of say 18,000 okay so please remember here fixed variable in the case of non manufacturing over it is not going to affect at all but I want you to be strong therefore I am just giving you a classification here but we need to concentrate only on this fixed manufacturing over it nothing else okay right now uh, uh, volume volume information number of units produced 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 okay 30,000 number of units sold number of units sold 20,000 how many units are there with you 10,000 Ten thousand, right? Ten thousand. Closing inventory. Yeah, closing inventory is ten thousand. Clear. So this information you are going to use in the profit calculation when you are, you know, uh, using absorption costing method and variable costing method. Perfect. Now, if you use absorption costing method, if you use absorption costing method, your cost of goods sold is going to be like this absorption costing. Absorption costing method. Yes. Are you going to use direct material? Yes. Direct material? Yes. How much is that direct material is what? 800,000, right? 800,000 800,000 direct label yes we'll consider here 200,000 okay fixed manufacturing over it yes remember fixed manufacturing over it we consider here okay in the product cost calculation that is 120,000 and uh, variable manufacturing over it yes we consider 
that is eighty thousand dollars clear now what is the cost of production here cost of production cost of production is yes one million two hundred thousand one million two hundred thousand clear now let us calculate cost of goods sold cost of goods sold cost of goods sold one million two hundred thousand okay times yes how many units you produced thirty thousand how many units is sold twenty thousand twenty thousand divided by thirty thousand will give you cost of goods sold what is the amount yes 1.2 million divided by 30,000 times 20,000 this is the cost of goods sold yeah and now ending inventory ending inventory yes this is the amount we have in our uh, 10,000 is the amount of units you have in ending inventory, whereas 1.2 million is the amount you spent on producing this 30,000 units. Therefore, your ending inventory value is going to be, yes, how many units? Times 10,000 will give you 400,000. You can even cross check here. Cost of goods sold is 800,000. Okay. And uh, ending inventory is 400,000, which is matching with your cost of production of 1.2 million yes okay so this information we are going to use in absorption costing method okay sales 2 million cost of goods sold cost of goods sold this amount right eight hundred thousand this is gross profit yeah gross profit then deduct your operating profit operating expenses operating expenses these are the amounts okay so you can detect all these amounts because they're all operating expenses whether it is fixed or variable you don't need to care about it entire amount is to be expensed okay your operating profit is 1 million 135000 1 million 135000 is the operating profit here okay good now let us see what amount of operating profit we get using what variable costing method okay right now just let me use this information here and I'll change the numbers and we use variable costing method. Okay. Yeah. We are using now variable costing method. Okay. Variable costing method takes into consideration direct material. Yes. Direct labor. Yes. Fixed manufacturing over it? Oh, 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 no. Because that 100% amount is going to be absorbed in the current period itself. Okay. Therefore, you have a cost of production of 1,080,000 plus that cost of goods sold. When you calculate, you know, you should add the remaining amount of the fixed over its 100% amount, please. So what I'm doing here is 1,080,000, 1,080,000 
multiplied by 20,000 divided by 30,000 which you produce plus entire amount of fixed manufacturing overhead will go to cost of goods sold. Please do remember this. The, the, the fixed manufacturing overhead and under absorption costing method is treated like period cost. Okay, treated like period cost. So you have 1 million, yes, 1 million, 80,000 divided by 30,000 multiplied by 20,000 plus what is that? 120,000, right? So your cost of goods sold is going to be 1 million, is it so? Multiplied by 20,000 right here, 20,000, yeah, 20,000. One million, 80,000. So, 840,000. And what is the ending inventory? 1,080,000. Let me change the numbers. 1,080,000 times 10,000 divided by 30,000. Thirty-six thousand. Thirty-six thousand. No, oh, three hundred and sixty thousand, right? One million eighty thousand. Yeah, three hundred and sixty thousand. Even if you cross-check, it will be one point two million again. Right. Let us use this information in absorption costing. Uh, sorry, variable costing method. Yes. Now, see here. Uh, one point two million. Is a sale sale remains same sale remains same sorry 2 million is a sale it remains same but cost of goods sold this time is going to be this one 840,000 so your gross profit is a 1 million 160,000 remember last time it was 1 million 200,000 okay right now the operating expenses remain same remain same okay there is no change in that so the profit here is 1,095,000 now just i want to have a rico statement here between these two methods why there is a difference in the profit okay why there is a difference in the profit let me show you with a reconciliation okay a small reconciliation here let us have this reconciliation uh, we are using absorption cost, absorption and variable, variable, yeah, profit, profit. If you see the profit here, profit is 1,135,000, okay, whereas variable costing method, It is 1,095,000. Let's see the difference. Difference. Difference between this and this is 40,000. Now let us see the ending inventory also. Can you see the ending inventory here? Ending inventory is 400,000 under absorption costing method, whereas 360,000 under variable costing method. Now let me write here ending inventory. Yes, 400,000 as per absorption costing and 360,000 is the amount as per variable costing method. What is the difference here? Exactly. See, the difference is due to the value in ending inventory. If there is a change in ending inventory, that will reflect in your cost of goods sold, thereby profit as well. You understand? So, Using absorption costing method, you are paying more profits. You are paying more taxes, isn't it? This is the reason why the tax department encourages the absorption costing method. Okay. Whereas using the variable costing method, your profit is only 1,095,000. 
as the owner of this company you may see that why should i use this amount to pay my uh, 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 you know the managers uh, incentives and all better let me use a variable costing method okay so the tax authorities ask you to use absorption costing method whereas the owners owners use the variable costing method this is for internal purpose for the calculation of incentives etc clear yes now we understand that absorption costing is used for external reporting purpose okay we are preparing absorption costing method only to pay taxes whereas for incentive purpose we are encouraging our people to use variable costing method so under absorption costing method if there is a closing inventory the profit is higher when i say profit please remember it can be gp it can be np it can be np it can be retain earnings and it can be even equity because it is going to affect everything right gp np retain earnings and equity and a variable costing method yes lower what about the ending inventory yes it is higher and variable costing method it is lower now external reporting external reporting allowed okay here not allowed so please remember these points there may be a multiple choice question that if there is an ending inventory in a in a company and the company is using absorption costing method uh, you tell whether the absorption costing method as compared to variable costing method the net profit is higher lower no change or something else like that so net profit retain earnings equity gross profit will be higher using absorption costing method okay and one important point is that to save your time in the exam to save your time in the exam sometimes in multiple choice questions he may ask you that what is the change in the profit what is the change in the profit between absorption costing method and variable costing method so use this formula change in profit between absorption costing method costing method and variable costing method equals to just simply you use this fixed manufacturing over it divided by number of units produced multiplied by number of units in the ending inventory this will give you the difference in the profit let's go back and check difference in the profit here say difference in the profit is 40000 okay now what is the fixed manufacturing overhead see 120000 120000 use the same formula here same formula let me change it to the numbers now yes fixed manufacturing over it is 120000 divided by number of units produced 30000 multiplied by the number of units which you have in the stock is 10000 units okay what is the amount here yes 120000 divided by 30000 times 10000 you got the same amount so next time when there is a multiple choice question asking about the difference in the profit between absorption costing and variable costing method please just use only this formula to answer the question but do not i do not encourage you to do all these calculations wasting your time don't do this please just use this formula what is that what is my fixed over it fixed manufacturing over it and how many units I produced? How many units I'm still having in my closing inventory? 
gives the formula fixed manufacturing overhead divided by number of units produced multiplied by number of ending units will give you the difference in the profits no need to go for this calculation okay examination point examination point do remember this formula and just use this okay we had a beautiful example with the variable costing and absorption costing method and also there is a hint if a question is asked in a multiple choice that what is the difference in profit between absorption costing and variable costing we used a formula fixed manufacturing overhead divided by total number of units produced multiplied by the number of units that is there in ending inventory simply use this small formula to get the answer yeah perfect so variable costing we know that it is a direct or marginal costing and please do remember that this method is not allowed for external reporting it is only only used in a management reporting okay and uh, what is the specialty in this method the total fixed manufacturing overhead is going to be expensed nothing is going to be pushed to the next year or uh, 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 not allowed to be transferred to next year even though you have 5000 units stock in the ending inventory entire fixed manufacturing overhead is expensed in the current period itself but not pushed to the next year okay so in the other words you can say that it is treated like a period cost what is the treatment of period cost period cost is expensed as incurred that means selling and distribution right so it is treated like a period cost now absorption costing and variable costing under absorption costing method we consider all the amounts of the cost of production as the product cost dm dl variable manufacturing overhead and fixed manufacturing overhead and uh, selling and distribution you know that this is a period cost under variable costing method direct material direct labor a variable manufacturing overhead should be taken as period co product cost and the fixed manufacturing overhead is treated like a period cost but don't mix in the operating expenses it is only for the treatment of the cost of goods sold and ending inventory but on the p and l account your income statement do not show this amount under you know operating expenses using absorption costing method okay it is only for the calculation of cost of goods sold and uh, 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 ending inventory value we treat it like a period cost but we are not going to club along with the period cost okay. right so product cost and period cost classification using absorption costing and variable costing method and just to have a recap of this uh, topic absorption costing method we called it as full costing method and this is the only method allowed for external reporting whereas gap we use you know method like a variable costing method and um, we classify the overheads by function cost of goods sold selling expenses admin expenses under variable costing or direct costing method we use you know for this information only for internal purpose and we classify according to the behavior of the cost cost of goods sold is calculated using variable costing okay and fixed overheads are expensed fixed manufacturing overheads are expensed in the same period what i suggest you all is please do concentrate on fixed manufacturing overhead when you are practicing on absorption costing and variable costing calculate you know uh, exercises and uh, now the the absorption costing method absorption costing method will reveal you know will give you higher profits if there is a closing inventory absorption costing method gives you higher profit as compared to variable costing method and uh, variable costing method yes it shows less profit so there is a small homework for you please do it
you uh, are selling a product at the rate of $20 per kg and uh, you sold 75,000 kgs. The finished goods you had from beginning are 12,000, ending is 17,000. Yeah. Variable cost per kg is $8. Fixed manufacturing overhead is 320,000. Admin selling and distribution overheads information is given here. If at all the question is like, uh, how many you you know what is the difference in the profit between absorption costing and variable costing uh, especially to answer multiple choice question see you have 12,000 units uh, uh, in the beginning plus you sold you know 75,000 yeah and still you have 17,000 in your hand okay so how many units you actually produced 75 plus 17 will give you what 92,000 you produced 92,000 no total should be 92,000 but this includes beginning stock of 12,000 therefore you produced 80,000 80,000 Okay, you sold 75,000, you still have a closing inventory of 17. So total accountable number of units is 92, which includes 12,000 from your beginning inventory. So you produced 80,000. If you want to know the difference in the profit between absorption costing and variable costing, you are given information here, the fixed manufacturing over it, 320,000 divided by the number of units produced 80,000 times the number of ending inventory that is 17,000. So 320,000 divided by 80,000 times 17,000 will give you a difference in profit between these two methods which is 68,000 between absorption costing and variable costing method. Now, this is the difference in the profit. This is the difference in the inventory and difference in the profit as well. So what we understand here, absorption costing and variable costing method, if there is no ending inventory, no change in the inventory level, absorption costing method, variable costing method will reveal the same amount of profit. If increase inventory okay absorption costing method income is higher than the variable costing method a greedy manager a greedy manager whose incentive is tied up with the profit okay uh, may produce more goods just to increase the inventory levels at the end of the year that is called a phantom profits which is to be discouraged you guys management accountants set a policy in the company that guys we are using uh, 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 variable costing method for any kind of incentive calculations whereas absorption costing method is used for external reporting to avoid this kind of phantom profits okay so if the inventory is less we are producing exactly what we want and we are ending up with a small levels of inventory yes absorption costing income is less than the variable costing and use this formula to find the difference in the profit or inventory at the end of the period, okay, to, to avoid any other calculations and wasting your time, better use this formula, fixed manufacturing overhead divided by total output times number of units in the ending inventory. This is the end of the session on absorption costing and variable costing method. Hope you understand. We'll see you in the next session with a new topic. Till then. Happy learning.